Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I'm Samantha. This is Winona Reads. Today I am going to be giving you an idea of some of the stuff that I want to get to uh, this month, April. It is officially two days into April and I have started a audiobook. I'm about halfway through and then I have just a stack that I feel like I'm kind of in the mood for leaning towards. So um, that is what I am bringing to you today. Does it mean I'm going to get to all of these in April? No, but I feel like this is just what I'm feeling like I'm gravitating towards kind of so so why don't we start off first with <clears throat> excuse my voice my throat hurts today so I'm halfway through the um Paris apartment by Lucy Foley and I, ha I used an audible credit for that and like I said I'm halfway through it's good so far I think it's definitely very interesting I feel like this is another like polarizing one where people either like love it or hate it right off the bat and I actually have uh, one of her other books. I think it's The Hunting Party. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And, um, sorry, I was just thinking how I always turn to my bookshelf and I never, like, I've never once had that, like, connection where I see exactly what I'm looking for. But yeah, I tried to read The Hunting Party and just didn't, like, vibe with her writing style. So maybe I'll try it since I'm doing audio for this one maybe i'll try to do that one on audio too since it's going well so far it's definitely a good thriller like it's starting off really well definitely a lot of intrigue i do feel like they use the main guy's name way too much i don't know it's one of those where like every time i hear it, i'm like okay i get it like <laughs> everybody knows him everyone knows his name it's just annoying to hear like i don't know it, it might just be my pet peeve but that's the only negative I have so far and so yeah I started that I think two days ago and I'm making really good progress so I'm sure I will finish that if not this weekend probably early of like the beginning of next week so what was the what was the, I'm don't even mind me I'm so like mis discombobulated I don't know Okay, and then I started a graphic novel on Libby from my library, and that is Molly Knox Ostrig's The Girl from the Sea, and I think it's a newer release, um, but I did start that. I'm only 4% in. I'm probably going to finish that today, just because I feel like I fly through graphic novels pretty fast, and it did, like, the first couple of pages in, it is starting off like definitely catching my attention so I do want to like finish it since I'm thinking of it kind of thing uh and then I have two other ones that came in Leave the World Behind by Rahman Alam and Bright Burning Things by Lisa Harding I actually don't know what either of these are about I have just had them on request for a while so I kind of forgot and I don't even think I can like is there a I'm obviously not good at, I'm obviously not good at one, finishing my sentences, and two, knowing what books are ahead of time, and I don't know how to use this app to see what it is about. So, my apologies. Ah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. Rising International Literary Star makes her American debut with a visceral... Okay, so a brief portrait of addiction, recovery, and motherhood, similar essence to Shuggy Bean, which was the uh, award winner, was it the Booker Prize, I think, maybe? I have Shuggy Bean, too, so this may be, like, a good introduction, kind of, to it. The mom used to perform on stage, attend glamorous parties, date handsome men, ride in fast cars, which also led to dark nights, blackouts, empty cupboards, hazy nights she can't remember. What keeps her from losing herself completely is her son, but her love for her son conflicts with the um, immense love of the bottle. So that sounds intense. I actually wasn't expecting that. So. I'm probably going to pick that up ASAP because that sounds really good. And like I said, it'll be a sort of an introduction to Shuggy Bean just because I feel like Shuggy Bean is 
like longer and possibly more emotional like more in depth maybe leave the world behind uh okay i remember that so it's two families that come together i just don't know how there's a blackout hmm okay i'm not really sure there's a blackout and something about relationship building and seeing if they can trust the other family so i don't know but it was one of the read with jenna picks and i really like her book club i feel like her and reese witherspoon's book clubs are ones that like i kind of trust in regards to like i'm gonna like them they're very catchy um like grab your attention sorry so um i I'm gonna get to those shortly anyway let's just get into the physical copies these also if I can get them either an audible or Libby sometimes that does help to kind of um, get through my TBR a little bit faster so just because I have these in physical copy doesn't always mean that I read them in physical copy and um, so I do want to get to Amari and the Night Brothers by BB Alston I just got this from my son's scholastic book fair at school um and i need to stop saying um but that's another one i need to <laughs> stop saying i need new words you guys i need a dictionary uh so this was amari comes into like supernatural powers and i think it's kind of finding your place in you know the teenage aspect and the young adult aspect but then wielding whatever new power this is um i don't want to know too much about it going in just because i feel like children's books are better that way like you kind of just need to immerse yourself in it and not know too much ahead of time because then it i mean children's books are children's books they're supposed to be easy they're supposed to be you know just fully enveloping so i never really try to like know too much about it um but i just know that it's like supernatural kind of feel and totally me uh the next one is also a newer purchase for me and that's my year of rest and relaxation by otessa moshvig i have seen a couple other booktubers pick up some of her other work but i kind of did what i always do at the end of each month and sit in front of my bookshelf see you know what grabs my attention what like kind of stands out to me and then I read like the first little bit and see if it's something that I vibe with or something that I'm just not in the mood for and so this definitely not only caught my attention but I kind of stayed and like wanted to keep reading it even though I'm in the middle of other stuff so and sounds really good um this was I know I recently just hauled it but this was the um Columbia graduate who lives in the city and it's kind of finding her place in the world and all that stuff as far as a you know recent graduate you know finding out who you are after school i feel like we put so much emphasis on school in the united states and we put so much emphasis on like feeling like you should know what to do the second that you graduate and that's not always the case and i think the city is kind of i don't know how to explain it i feel like the city can be like very opposite either you know what you're gonna do and it takes off and you're good because you have a lot of options or the city's distracting and you find yourself still like lost so that'll be interesting to pick up the next one i do want to get to the next one i do want to get to is the beauty of your face by sahar mustafa this was another recent haul that i did in regards to the uh teacher well the main character is a teacher and there is a or no not a teacher a principal and there's a school shooting it i think it develops between you know what's going on in the present moment as well as like memories of possibly before she immigrated so i know this is going to be like very impactful so i want to make sure that like i'm not rushing through it i think it'll be probably closer to like the middle of the month the end of the month when i have less plans going on because I want to not skip any like I, I want to really pay attention and see what her most notable book is about does that make any sense no okay. uh the next one is Daisy Miller by Henry James I do have a couple of classics on here just because I haven't been doing that well with my classic challenge 
and so not only do I kind of want to play catch up but a lot of these are short so I'm trying to not force myself but I'm trying to just get more into it because I do enjoy classics I feel like I just haven't been picking the right ones at the right time so uh, this is Daisy Miller by Henry James and it's about a young girl, Daisy Miller, who is an American traveling through Europe. And I think that's kind of my vibe right now as well, um, reading about like Europe, especially after the Paris bookseller. I just think like that's where I'm at right now. So I think this will be a good one to pick up after that. But it just sounds a little bit like controversial or like the Daisy Miller is controversial. Or the character, not like the book. Um, and for some reason that like also is fitting my vibe of like Bridgerton. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure they have nothing in common, but I just kind of like saw like her outfit and stuff and was like, I'll try it. I've been binging Bridgerton and falling asleep to it and then having to rewatch what I missed out. And I feel like my husband's like, okay, are you done yet? <laughs> like, can we watch something else now? The next one I want to get to is another short one, also recently hauled last summer in the city um i ordered it off of amazon and finally got it in the mail because i did get it from like a second hand like it wasn't from amazon stock um but it is also another short one a little over 100 pages um and it is about a guy named leo gazzara who spends his time in an alcoholic ease in the city during the summer drifting between jobs finding out human relationships Everyone he knows wants to graduate, get married, get rich. He has no ambitions. I just think it sounds interesting, and apparently that's my vibe right now. I am very content in in my choices, but apparently I'm choosing books that the people are not content and have no idea what they're doing. It's entertaining, apparently. Uh, the next one is Edith Wharton, The Age of Innocence. I'm not sure why I gravitated towards this. Um, I did read Custom of the Country in college, and I do want to reread it because I did enjoy it. I know that I do like her writing. I don't think it's as dry as some of the other classics, and I think maybe that's why I gravitated toward it, as well as Bridgerton vibes, just in the sense of like older society and like the patriarchy and women's place in it, that kind of thing. So. I do want to pick this up. Um, this is about May Wieland. It says she's traveling through Europe, fleeing her failed marriage to, from a Polish count. I know her writing usually is, like her stories are about um, female relationships and kind of always making it a point to have like an outcast female uh, in regards to society back in that day. Like she always tends to have uh, someone who doesn't fit the mold and so I'm excited to see if it's similar in the sense of custom of the country I think May I think May was in custom of the country I could be wrong I'm not sure either way I do want to pick this one up um for some reason also that like gave me spring vibes and it's like actually well it's been like warm and then cold and then warm again it is consistently sunny and the grass is starting to turn green so i feel like things are like on the up and up but it's still windy and cold as s-h-i-t and i'm over it i want spring i want summer so i feel like that is like a good like easter springtime read i don't know i don't think i make any sense in these uh down and out in paris and london by george orwell is one of the other short ones that i want to pick up uh, only because it's the Parisian vibes that I'm kind of in right now and the European stories. This is also, it says occasional humor. It's very much, not depressive, maybe melancholy. Like it's not happier. Maybe I, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud here. I'm like, maybe I won't pick this up because I wanted like happy springtime vibes and this just sounds really dark and I just lo I really like George Orwell. I feel like he's definitely one of my favorite classic writers. So, um, also want to get back into A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I did start this. I only got a couple pages in, so I do want to finish it because I've been wanting to read this for so long. And so many people, when I did the other um, the vlog where I started it last month. A lot of people said that this was one of their favorites, so I know it's going to be good. I just need to dedicate some time to it. So, 
so I definitely want to pick this up and for some reason it also like probably just because it says a tree it gives me spring vibes as well and then the last one that I do want to get to is the phone booth at the edge of the world by Laura Messina this is a little bit of a heartwarming heartbreaking kind of story so we'll see where I'm at if I'm ready to you know have a day where I want to shed some tears maybe but she goes through a loss I think it's her mom yep uh jeez this is the same reaction I had the last time because I keep forgetting she loses her mom and daughter in a tsunami so yeah this is not only like grief and loss and everything like that but it does mention the phone booth at the edge of the world and I don't know if maybe you call and speak to people in the past or how that works everyone says it's breathtaking everyone has it, it I mean it's a bestseller so obviously it's worth the read um, so I am excited to get to it and I feel like it may be a little bit quicker just because not only are the the font is pretty big and the chapters are kind of short so I feel like it will move a little bit smoothly but I also think for some reason grief reading grief is something that kind of I become immersed in a little bit I think maybe because I do characterize myself as being very empathetic so I think once I'm in that story like I, I have to finish it otherwise it's just something that I think about constantly and I get nothing else done so those are my reads or what I would like to get to in April yeah I will keep you guys posted I will do a vlog on uh, reading some of these maybe I'll pick a weekend where I can kind of go through the shorter ones and I don't want to say bang a couple out because that sounds gross but something like that uh-huh and yeah and then I will do a vlog where I pair a drink with one of the classics maybe I'll do something fast well, that's not a word maybe I will do something fancy with the age of innocence but until then have a great weekend and I hope the weather is beautiful wherever you are. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know that for my subscribers. Um, and let me know what you're currently reading. Did I say that already? I don't know. Yeah. Have a good weekend. I will see you soon. Bye.